there comes times in our lives when uh, we feel that um, things are not working out and uh, we feel that uh, it's like God has left us. You feel that uh, nothing is really working out in your life. Like I've been going through TikTok and I see so many people are really depressed and uh, people are going through situations and they feel, where, where are you God? Where are you and uh, why are you leaving me at a time like this when I really need you most? Uh, what is it that you really need me to do? Is it some offering that you need me to give? Is it something that you need me to do? Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God does not want anything from you. But it is important that you go through this phase of life because something greater is coming. Think about it when the disciples were with Jesus. They had a very cool time. They walked with him, did many miracles. You know, it was a whole showbiz and they were enjoying the every experience. And here comes Jesus and he tells them, guys, it's about time that I want to leave. And uh, they're afraid. They're wondering now, if you are my leader, you've been leading me through this. You've been helping me. You've been talking to us. You've been advising us. Then now you're telling us that you want to leave. What's going to happen about us? And this is the same situation that most of us have been through. You've had your work flowing so well, your life flowing very well. Things have been working out, but it reaches a point that you feel as if God has, is, uh, is leaving. And um, you don't seem to understand why or what really is the problem. God is always saying that uh, he knows the end from the beginning. And he's preparing something greater, even much more greater than you ever imagined. Think about this in the book of um, John chapter 16 verse 7. Jesus said to his disciples, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient or important for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now the comforter was Jesus himself coming back in spirit. Jesus did not only want to walk with the people, but he wanted to walk in the people. Sometimes when you are looking at a situation and you're saying, Jesus, I just want you to walk close to me. I'm, I'm in this dire need. I'm just alone. Please, can you walk with me? He says, it is about time. I not only walk with you, but I walk in you because I want to be in you to do everything for you. Remember the Bible says, um, uh, Apostle Paul said in his uh, epistles that for it is a, a God who worketh in us both to will and to do. In everything that we do, he is the one who is working in us. He is the one who is calling the shots. He is the one who is in our minds, who is doing all these things that we want to do. Because now he is inside us. So it was important for him, not only just to be near you, but to be inside you. And uh, when you go through that phase of life when uh, things are really tight, just know that God is preparing not only just to walk with you, but to walk inside you, to direct your paths. And how is he going to walk in you? The moment you release yourself and be still and know that he is God. The moment you're trying to arrange your things, you're trying to use your mind and telling God, okay, God, this is what I planned. Uh, just tell me, push my thing here. I'm thinking this. Now, at that moment, you're walking with him. But now he wants to walk in you that you release yourself and you relax and then God is takes the place he takes the center stage and at that moment when he is inside you he will be able to think the will will be his both to will and to do according to his will so he's going to do the things he's going to think for you he's going to do everything for you from inside you the moment you relax yourself and you stop walking in the flesh and you walk in the spirit because it reaches a point my brothers and sisters you just have to let go of everything and let god be you tell him god you know in your word you say that you see the end from the beginning now you know the end of this matter you know the end of this thing i just want you to walk inside me do everything for me i leave everything for you and the bible says and abraham believed and it was counted for him unto righteousness my friend if you're a seed of abraham all that you need to do is believe when abraham was told go to a land that i'm going to show you 
He did not sit down and keep on thinking, but but God, which land is this? How long, how big is the land? Is there food? Is there this? Is that? No, he just believed and he started his journey. Sometimes you just need to believe what God tells you in his word. And uh, you put aside the fleshly man, the fleshly thinking and just tell God, God, now you know what? Do it for me. It doesn't matter what I'm thinking. It doesn't matter my ideas or my situation or the things which are turning up in my mind or the situations that I can see from my five senses because I see the world is falling apart. My world is falling apart. But God, you've given me higher promises. Now, these promises, are they going to be fulfilled? You told me that I shall eat, I shall dress, I shall wear, I, I shall uh, have a place to sleep. But here comes a situation. I see the landlord is coming. He wants to close my house. He, he, I don't have food for my children. But God, you promised me this. So what am I going to do? God says, be still. Psalms 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Wait and see. Because it is important for me that I go. I remove this situation of the flesh. You stop seeing me in the flesh. So that now you can see me in the spirit. That is the whole message, my friends. Stop seeing God in the flesh. Jesus told his disciples, guys, it is about time you stop seeing me with your uh, eyesight. I want now to go so that you can see me in the mind sight. I want you to see me from within because I'm coming back as a spirit of Christ inside you. And I'm going to lead your path. A few moments, you shall not see me. But a few moments you shall see me. And they were confused. How shall we see you? Few minutes we shall not see you. And few minutes we shall see you. It is that the moment you close the flesh, you close the five senses, you stop seeing God from the light of the five senses, from the fleshly aspect. Now you have opened your mind sight. And immediately God shall be in you. Remember, God lives in you. According to Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of God is within you. He lives within you. And the Bible says that let this mind which was in Christ be in you. You have the mind of Christ. That mind is the one which lives in you, trying to do all the things for you. So all you need to do is, God, I relax. Use your mind. Fix this situation for me. If your mind, the mind that I have is the mind which was in Christ, then fix my situation. Let it be. I'm not going to be worried about anything. I know you feed the birds of the sky and yet they don't work. You, you, you say that you feed those that you love even when they are asleep. God, you shall do this for me. You shall work it out for me. I may not have uh, the monies to do this or I may not have the connections. I may not have this. But if David who was grazing his father's flock, you were able to pick him up from that place into where you got him to be the king. God, you can pinpoint me. You can pinpoint me for my favors. You can pinpoint me for my situation and handle my situations. And if he was able to kill Goliath, what kind of Goliath can I be able to kill? If Christ is in me, I can do all things through him who strengthens us.